about human rights violations across China and concerns about the situational traffic continues to pandemic. Uh, integrity system is the most advanced. You can ask the guys that built the DRX hurricane and knocked us down. And when we got up, the coal came on and just knocked us flat on our back. So here we go, folks. This is the Ice Hut Conversion um, Rapala. Rapala Ice Series that I converted. I think this is the Sherpa brand. The Sherpa. My dad bought this for me, I'm not joking, probably 10 years ago. And I've used it ice fishing. I've had it as a ground blind for uh, hunting birds or bears. thing has been awesome. It's instant pop-up, so you just pull these suckers out. Boom, boom. Which I'll show you is on another video of setting this whole thing up. Um, but this is what I use for a hot tent. I <laughs> You'll like this. This is a pizza pan. We're going to get into this uh, <clears throat> in a little bit more detail. So I took this uh, stove jack. That's what they call this is a stove jack. And it has this fiberglass um, fiber on it. I think it's like a fiberglass like something mix in there. And they've used it for years as a heat wrap. So I picked this up from the Army Surplus store. And obviously you can tell the hole in it. It's a six inch hole and I have like a two inch pipe here. So um, it wasn't working. So I took this old pizza pan that I got and I cut a hole in it. And that goes over top to, it acts as two things. I can use it to keep my um, my stove pipe away from the sidewall of this heat shield. And I can also use it to keep the snow out and the heat in. Up top, it didn't have a screen mesh on it. I put a screen mesh on it, a wire screen mesh to... Uh, arrest the sparks that come out. I don't want any sparks coming out and hitting my hitting my shelter. And you always want to make sure that that stove jack is up above your shelter to some degree. You know, you want it up there so that the when the wind picks up, it's not blowing sparks, you know, down on top of your on top of your shelter. So this thing is pretty cool. It cuts the wind like crazy. It has lots of ventilation. It has lots of windows. I mean, it's just for me, it's just great. So at the same Army Army Surplus store, which is actually called Ecotrek, it's located in North Bay, um, I met the owners there a few weeks ago and just absolutely wonderful, wonderful people. If you're ever in North Bay, Ontario, and you want some good Army Surplus stuff, these guys have it all. Um, so again, I had the whole tent, Army tent, so I cut a bit off. That's going to be my ground lay. That's going to keep that cold from coming up through my back and freezing me in the night. So I've had this stove rocking, rocking, rocking today. And it gets pumping hot in here. I was in here last year and I think it was minus 30, minus 38. And uh, you're sweating. It's She's warm. Um, but let me show you some modifications that I did. I did to it. So this is what I say about when you get your gear, figure out what works. Don't just put it together and hope that it's going to be great. Because it's not. It's not always great. So the biggest thing I found were the joints on the stove. Um, they didn't go like this when I bought the stove. So I had to make a modification and I did it today. So this was just a trial. I'm going to make this fit down here a little bit better, but I just took the pipe, reversed it. And I want my pipes to always slide inside each other in the direction of when the creosote builds up in these pipes, it's going to build up. You don't want it dripping outside. So these used to, these pipes used to fit over top of here. That's how it came from factory. What I found last year was the creosote was running down the pipes and catching fire on top of the stove. It's just like a home application. They would never wet certify chimney pipes that aren't running into each other. So I have them now so that the creosote runs down inside the other pipe as it burns and builds, builds and burns, and it's not going to run on top of my stove causing a fire, causing a pipe fire. It's going to burn itself off. It's going to keep everything contained within. And you can see how that plate worked up top for me. So I can move the stove, move it around, get it in the center so that I'm away from that heat shield and I know that I'm safe. The stove is actually pretty cool. I cut the legs down just a little bit so that um, I could be a little bit closer to it and I could feed it without getting up at night. So here's the little stove. She's completely gone out now, but it gets rocking and I didn't, I didn't like this either. So this is your draft settings. I've got these big holes. So I was camping in it the first night and sparks were coming out, landing on my bed lay down in here. And I'm like, holy crap, it's going to light me on fire in the middle of the night. So I put again a bit more of that wire screen in here. And that wire screen is uh, basically going to um, 
stop any sparks from coming out and, and lighting you up. And it always gets smoky. It always gets, uh, it always gets a bit nasty when you start the stove. But once you get the coals going and you get her fed, it smooths right out. And yeah, this is awesome. I love this. This is my winter camp uh, spot. Like I said, I've stayed in here for, I think last year was like four nights, five days. And she was cold, man. It was like late January, maybe early February, right in our deep freeze. And yeah, it was uncomfortable as heck, but I'm still alive. I'm still here. And what I like about these ice fishing shocks, check this out. Every wall has this. So when you get smoked out in here and you want to get some ventilation going, you've got ventilation from every side. Boom, boom, boom. Rip them down and away you go. And then they fold back up. They let a bit of light in. It's all Velcro. And then if you don't want any light in at all, shut her down. Put the cover on her. That time. That's what I love about these. Um, they're very easy to put up, to install. Very simple and quick, which when it's super cold outside, you want everything to be as, just as fluid and quick as possible. Now, I have one in the bush before and done like bushcraft setups where I'm building my own chairs and building my own shelters and all that jazz, which is awesome. I love doing that. But when it's minus 30, minus 40, and you just want to get going and you want to get warm, and when your main reason is to get out there and get meat, uh, procure meat and stay comfortable, then you don't want to be doing that jazz because you're going to work up a sweat, you're going to get hot, you know, the whole la da da um, cycle continues or starts at that point. So you just want to, I want to make it as simple as possible for myself now. If I was going in on a pleasure trip, yeah, I could do all that, you know, all the bushcraft stuff and have a really enjoyable time doing that if I wasn't worried about getting meat. But I want to get in and get meat. I need that meat for the winter here to uh, to survive and to stay alive. And I like to have it on hand. Um, it's obviously very inexpensive. We have a high abundance of rabbits here. I'm not hurting the population. And I love the meat. So for me, this is the way to fly. This is the way to go. Um, it's a strictly... I have fun on the trips, but basically my concern and my, my main focus is getting that meat, getting those rabbits back home. Um... But yeah, so I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, enjoy my setup. It's a pretty simple setup. And, uh, you know, once you get used to it and you, and you, you know, just you figure out what you need to be comfortable and to survive, then you're in good shape. I mean, you are, as long as you like this stuff, if you're taking someone with you that hates it or you hate it, what's the point, right? There's no, no point in going. Just get used to your gear, figure out your clothes. Figure out what works for you. Figure out your limits. I mean, we all have limits. And push yourself a little bit. So I hope you're having fun. I hope you're having a great uh, start to the new year. I'm going to have a great start to the new year next weekend when I get to go out. And I'll show you kind of the trip as a whole, how it goes. You know, if I stay for one night or two nights, I'm not sure yet. But I'll kind of let you know uh, the productivity of it, the camp setup, getting into my location, all that jazz. And... Uh, yeah, I hope you're doing great. I'll take a, fa a flash video here of once all my stuff's in that uh, that sled. And I'll show a couple pictures of that at the end. So hope you're doing great. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, love you as lots. Happy 2023. I hope we can all get through it together and uh, and survive and, and prep enough. And, uh, you know, look at the important things that we need, need to pull through this crazy time right now. So hope you're doing great. Thanks a lot. And we'll, we'll see you soon. Bye. Human rights violations across China. And concerns about the situational traffic continues with the pandemic. Uh, integrity system is the most advanced. And you can ask the guys that built the DRX hurricane and knocked us down. And when we got up, the cold came down and just knocked us flat on our back.